IELTS Writing Task 1 for the General Test. I'm Mike Watty, ex-IELTS examiner from Taipei and Adelaide. I, I, I want to go into the task achievement score a little bit more with you. And the reason why I want to do this is because a lot of candidates are throwing away marks needlessly because they're not responding to the key requirements for writing their tasks. Let me highlight a few of the most common issues that I see of people throwing away marks. So if we look at band four, we can see fails to clearly explain the purpose of the letter. So if you don't explain the purpose of the letter, band four. This is why I said write the purpose of your letter right at the start. This way you won't forget to write it and the examiner is also going to see that you've done it and be happy to give you five and above. I'm, I'm sure you'll get more than five. Also a band for the tone might be inappropriate, right? So if you're writing to someone for a job, you can't write, dear bro, please hook me up with some work. It's, it's too informal, right? We can't use colloquial language like we might do with our friends. We've got to use a very formal style that's appropriate. And, and even when we move up to band five, we can still see some uh, language about the purpose and tone that's really important. The, the purpose for the letter may be unclear at times. So this could be that you have a clear purpose at the start of the letter, but maybe you drift off later. So the letter we're going to be looking at today is to apply for a job. It would be inappropriate if you're applying for a job to start um, asking, you know, what what's the weather like in your country, right? Because ma maybe you're going to work abroad. What's the weather like in your country? That would be inappropriate. So um, it, it would be starting to move the purpose of you applying for a job onto you wanting to know what it would be like to work in a particular country or place. And it says the tone may be inappropriate. Sorry, that's band four. Band four is maybe inappropriate. Uh, band five, sometimes inappropriate. So it could be appropriate in parts. So I, I, I guess what it means is a couple of slips. In a couple of places, the tone is not quite right, but not so bad that it's a four. Now, when, when it comes to the bullet points, um, band four is you just failed to respond to a bullet point completely. There's a bullet point in there and you didn't respond to it all. That's why you need to be careful to make a plan before you start writing so you're responding to all three bullet points. And it's another reason why I advocate a, a discrete paragraph for each bullet point so that the examiner can't possibly not see that you've responded to all three points. If you start mixing them together like a bowl of spaghetti and then expect the examiner to unravel your spaghetti and sort it out into meatballs and pasta and tomato, um, you, you, you're expecting a lot from the examiner and you're introducing risk. What if the examiner comes in to mark the tasks and has a hangover? Not really thinking clearly and you've given them a bowl of spaghetti and they can't work it out. Your job is to make it easy for the examiner, to make it so is uh, risk-free that, that they can't help but see that you've responded to all three bullet points so that you can get five and up. Now, a, a, a five would be um, you've responded to all bullet points, but maybe one of them not in an ideal way. And the best way to explain this would be regarding plurality. If the question's written in plural, you must respond in plural. So so just as an example, if the bullet point was something like, um, uh, let, let, let's say you're writing to a landlord and you've got to tell the landlord about problems with your apartment. If it says problems, you need at least two problems in order to get to six. If you only give one problem, that's a five because it asks for problems, plural, and you've only given one. And then if you don't give any problems at all, that's a four or lower.
because you've totally failed to respond to the bullet point. The, the reason why I also advocate um, responding to each bullet point in its own paragraph and starting those paragraphs with a phrase that sends a signal to the examiner what the paragraph is about is because of the requirements for cohesion and coherence. Let's have a look at what you need to be doing for a band seven. And you can see that having discrete paragraphs for each bullet point and starting those paragraphs with a signal to indicate to the examiner what the paragraph is about is really, really helpful. So band seven logically organizes information and ideas. There is clear progression throughout. So the, the progression just means your ideas are, are being advanced in a linear way that you're not sort of responding to one bullet point here in your letter, going on to something else and then coming back to it again down here, right? There should be this linear progression and the best progression is to just follow the bullet points in those orders with a paragraph for each one. It uses a range of cohesive devices appropriately. So I, I think these topic phrases act like a cohesive device. A cohesive devices, co cohesion is about things sticking together, right? And when you start your uh, paragraph off with a topic phrase that tells the reader what what the paragraph's about, this is a cohesive device. It's It's helping. This phrase that tells the reader what the paragraph is about connects well with the details that you give in the paragraph. It's just like a topic sentence in a letter, but it's not always a sentence when you're writing a letter. It might just be a phrase followed with another clause that gives um, some of the details in response. And looking at band eight, this sort of ties in a bit about my paragraphing and about the discrete paragraph for each of the bullet points. Let's see what it says. Uses paragraphing sufficiently and appropriately. So the paragraphing is really important, especially at the band eight level. It doesn't mean it's not important at lower levels, but especially at the band eight level. And so I think when you have a uh, response to one of the bullet points straddling two paragraphs, it's not ideal. And it could be a reason for the examiner to not give you band eight. And, and in terms of the formality of the letters and using language appropriately, this is also really important for your lexical resource. Let's see what it says for band seven. Some awareness of style and collocation. So style, here the, the writing style is about the formality of the letter. If we're writing a formal letter, we can't say, hey, dude, it would be great if you could hire me because that's informal, right? That's strongly informal. I, I wouldn't be writing, hey, dude, in any letter, right? For the IELTS, whether it's formal or semi-formal or informal, I wouldn't be writing something like that at all. And if you did, it's going to do damage, especially for a formal letter. Now, one of the issues that sometimes happens with these letters is um, it can be tricky to decide if it's a formal letter or, or not, right? I imagine you're writing to your boss. If you're writing to your boss, you might know him like a friend. And so you might think, oh, I think it's a semi-formal letter because I know my boss and we're good friends. And I can just write, dear Bob and um, cheers, Mike, at the end of the letter because I'm close to him and I have this sort of relationship my suggestion is don't do it that way. Don't expect the examiner to be thinking that you might have that sort of relationship with your boss and therefore writing in that way might be okay. Um, what I would suggest instead is it's better to be too formal than not formal enough. And, and, and also quite often we don't have that sort of relationship with our boss. Sometimes we fear our boss and is a very uh, kind of stiff and formal situation. So I'd go with the formal style. I'd be writing, uh, I wouldn't be writing dear sir or madam because presumably you know your boss. So I'd be writing something like dear Bob Smith and 
then at the end of the letter, yours sincerely, because I know him, uh, Mike Watty. Right? So if you're not sure on the level of formality, I suggest it's safer to go more formal than less formal. You might also be interested in my ebook for writing, and I'll put details of that in the description. And then I strongly suggest you subscribe to me. This way you're going to get notifications as I release new videos. The next video I'm going to be working on is the other kind of letter, the kind of uh, semi-formal, semi-informal letter that you need to be able to write as well. Best of luck preparing for your test.